Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today we're gonna to brave the fog. We've got our pruning gear. We're gonna walk through how to prune your trees in winter time. Let's get busy. Pruning is one of these funny things. It's almost like skydiving where people say, what, you're gonna jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> and so when you come out with these pruning shears and you make a cut, you're thinking, this tree didn't do anything to me. This tree's trying to make me fruit and here I am cutting off its limbs. Well, if uh, that's how you look at it, then yeah, don't. <laughs> but uh, if you recognize that pruning a tree is going to provide you with better fruiting over time, better health of the tree because you're allowing sunlight and airflow to come in where those pests aren't as easily able to hide, um, you're providing for the overall structure and the long-term structure of the tree so that way it can support those eventual fruit sets. Um, it's hard. It's hard to make those cuts because it feels so... Um, tangible you know you see that you're making a cut to this tree that's living that's just trying to do its thing but pruning is actually a very healthy thing for you to do for your trees not only for the health of your tree but in terms of the overall long-term production of your tree you want less headaches down the road so you take care of those by pruning your tree now it's an important part of having um, having back you know fruit trees in your backyard um, not to mention that uh, Pruning is the really the only way you're going to control the eventual height of these trees. Unless you want to be up on a ladder and let them grow to their eventual heights. I know like some of these cherry trees and apple trees, they can grow 20, 30 feet, even on dwarfing rootstocks. Um, so prune, prune, prune. Your trees will thank you for it and future you will thank you for it. Well, as you can see, I am hitting the pruning a little bit late this year. It's right now, second week of February. Um, we are also compounded with a warm winter this year. You couldn't tell by the fog that it's been a warm one, but that uh, has caused these trees to just push uh, out growth and push out blooms earlier than normal. So it's a combination of both, finding the time to get out here to do this and the warmer weather. Um, so. I, ideal time for me is to do this when it's entirely dormant, when there's no growth on the trees. Part of the reason for that is just being able to see more clearly what's going on with the wood. You can still prune right now. It's not gonna harm your trees to do it. Um, you know, the interesting thing about growing fruit trees in the backyard or in any kind of setting, frankly, um, is that it's a trade-off. There are always gonna be trade-offs. You're gonna decide um, when you prune, you're, you're trading um, structure and stability for maybe some fruit production. Same thing goes with thinning. You're gonna have less fruit, but you're gonna have better fruit. Um, and there are a bunch of different trade-offs and you have to just decide what's good for you. Tra you know, Pruning for height um, is going to mean that you don't have to get on a ladder. So which do you value more? Um, so anyway, something important as you're doing winter pruning, which differs from summer pruning. Summer pruning is generally where we're taking the tops down where we're trying to reduce the overall height of the tree. Winter pruning is where you come in and can do all of that detail pruning. That detail pruning meaning you're looking for those five D's. You're looking for diseased, dying, deformed. Um, what are the other D's? I always forget these right on the spot. But anyway, the point is, is that you're able to see what's going on with the structure more clearly without all of that foliage blocking. Because as you can imagine, as I look at this apple over here, I can see more clearly the stuff that's you know, creating an issue. I need to cut off this one that's growing into the middle. I wouldn't be able to see that as easily if it was like, you know, let's say for example, the citrus was one of those apple trees. You can't see as easily what is growing in which direction. So winter pruning, very important. Again, not an ideal time because it's so beautiful. I don't want to cut off blooms. I think it's a psychological thing too, to not go out and do winter pruning after growth has kind of started. Um, but hey, that's the deal. Either I prune it now or I don't prune it at all and I'm not gonna do that. I wanna make sure I'm keeping the structure healthy, keeping that uh, opening in the inside of the tree. Um, so we're gonna take a look at some examples of what we're gonna be cutting off today. Okay, so when we approach a tree, first what we wanna do is to look at what's growing into the center of the tree. And again, um, a lot of winter pruning is, is trying to imagine what would happen if this, if this branch you know, was fully loaded with fruit and with foliage. And with this one, for example, we see that it's going right into the middle of the tree, right through the middle of it. And so we don't really want a bunch of competing branches here. We want openness, we want sunlight. 
Um, we want you know airflow for the inside of the tree that helps to prevent some sort of disease. Um, and so what we're doing is I noticed there's kind of a this thing is uh, this is a great example actually right here. This this branch right here is showing us that one it's growing into the middle of the tree. Um, it also has this dead piece or dying piece right here, this dying branch. Um, and this one is dead right here. And I can't tell, I don't think it's diseased. So it doesn't hit all of, all of the Ds, but it hits enough of them where I'm probably going to take this off right here, this entire little piece here, because it's really not providing, I mean, this is kind of getting in the way. Um, so I'm going to cut this off and, and create some openness here. It's not going to be competing with this branch, with this branch any higher. And so I'm going to make this cut. Okay, so this is our Honeycrisp apple. We've not uh, really had much vigor on this. Um, it's really not rated for our climate. We really don't have enough chill hours for this thing. But I got it, again, on special at Home Depot. I just, we love Honeycrisp apples. I had to try it. So hasn't been productive. Had, haven't had, had a single fruit on it in the couple of years it's been in the ground. Um, but, you know, as you're looking at this, do you see anything that might be competing? Um, I noticed that this one might be competing. I'm trying to create openness here. And we don't want things that are growing in toward the center. So we're going to be a little bit ruthless about that. But this uh, tree just doesn't have a whole lot of growth on it. So we just, two cuts and the whole tree is done. You know, as I'm going through and I'm finding dead wood, it's really can feel discouraging. What we need to do right now is just take note that there was something going on here. If there's anything observable, take a note of it. But um, right now we're just got to go through and prune. So if you're seeing dead wood, you can think twice about it later, but right now the objective is prune, prune, prune. And so it's easy for me to overthink this. So I'm just going to go through and prune off any dead wood, anything that's diseased, anything that's growing in um, and disfigured. And uh, we can kind of look at some of the causes of why we might be having um, some die off later. I can tell just by looking at this that this branch is dead. I don't know if you can see that. It's totally... Um, it's dead in the inside here. I'm gonna cut a little further back and, okay. See, now you notice just going back a little bit further on there, we were able to see signs of life. And so I'm not gonna prune back any further than that, but I just wanna get rid of the, the wood that's dead on the end of it. So just going back a little bit further, got a got good healthy wood. I wanna remind you that uh, whether you're making cuts on a you persimmon like this one or on another tree is you want to pay attention to where those buds are and you always want to prune uh, so that the buds are growing out um, if you prune and you have a bud that's facing into the tree this bud is going to then grow and provide scaffolding into the middle of the tree we're wanting to avoid that so kind of whether it be summer pruning or winter pruning especially winter pruning when you can see all the detail you want to be aiming for buds that are going to point out from the center of the tree so that way you get a nice uh, full scaffolding heading out from the center it's crazy this cherry tree is already pushing its uh, leaves out this is our um, mini royal and mini royal and royal lee which are next to it they uh, these are generally producing um, and ready to harvest in kind of late May and so this is gonna push a lot earlier um, but that's just gonna you know it's more important to me to make sure that these two branches for example are not interfering with each other than um, trying to catch this before it blooms. So yeah, if I had to choose, I'm just gonna do what I'm doing now, I'm gonna prune it. So you may notice we've got one branch that's going up here into the middle of the tree, and this branch that's going out. Of the competing ones, I'm gonna favor the one that's growing out away from the tree. So I'm gonna come to the base. Here I'm gonna make a single clean cut, and now there's a whole lot more openness here. This is that kind of detail pruning you can do in the winter. Here's another example here where this branch is growing into this branch. Now I can either remove this entire branch or I can just grab a lower bud here and allow it to now flush out on its own. Down here, this is growing in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grab an outer facing bud and hope that it grows out this way. This is growing in toward the center of the tree, so we're gonna get rid of it. Anything that's interfering needs to be checked want openness, open canopies. So sunlight can come into the center of the tree, airflow can move through the tree. Uh, 
Oh, I have to have to talk about this. Any type of uh, branch that you see that's just kind of a long whip, we don't want these long straggly branches that fruit at the end of it. We want a bushy tree. So any of these that have just kind of a long whip, we're gonna want to reduce by a third or even half. So that way um, this now is going to create some foliage out here as opposed to just continuing upward. And I'm gonna go through and make sure that all of these long whips get attended to in the same way. But this is, you see how much more open this is? It's less crowded, nothing's growing in toward the center. There's space in between these trees. Um, and so these two cherries, I think are gonna be set up for, you know, what they're gonna do in a couple of months here. <clears throat> gonna still have a ton of fruit set on here. Um, you know, that's again, it, there's a trade-off. How big do you want the tree to be? How much fruit, how many flowers do you want immediately? Or how many do you want over the life of the tree? And that's really what I'm trying to focus on by making these pruning cuts while the tree is still relatively small. Um, it can feel difficult sometimes to make those cuts because you're thinking, well, there goes all the fruit, <laughs> but it's just like thinning fruit. You're doing that for a reason with, you know, an eventual purpose in mind. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with how these cherries are doing. All right, here I am next to my, uh, Spice Z neck to plum, beautiful tree still has last season's foliage on it. Um, didn't even fall off totally before. It, the blooms came on, that's just how warm the winter's been. Um, and then we've got behind me this kind of already blooming Arctic Star Nectarine. Um, what I'm doing here, if I look through here, it's just totally scraggly. There are, there are things growing in the center, there are branches growing over each other. So again, we're looking for those five Ds, dead, dying, diseased, deformed, and damaged wood. And anything that falls into those categories, and I consider it deformed, um, to be those that are growing over each other because if it's not deformed now it will eventually be once they start rubbing on each other so um, this has a lot of stuff that needs to get cleaned up I need to bring some of the height down and uh, create some more openness I also need to bring these branches back this is one of the trees that had some limb breakage last season because of how much fruit was on here which is a good problem to have um, because you can support it but we really want that that uh, you know, the foliage and the branches to be brought back a bit to support a fruit set this year. So I'm gonna start pruning quick. Something you may wanna keep in mind as you're doing your pruning is to <clears throat> see if you can make one cut that will solve you having to make 10 other cuts. So for example, this one here in the middle I'm realizing is is creating just kind of, it's right in the middle of the tree. It's not my open base shape that I'm going for. And so rather than working my way down and making 20 cuts, I'm just gonna make a single cut at the base here and I'm gonna have an entire branch that, that take, essentially does 20 cuts for me with just a single one. So you wanna economize. Okay, how many cuts would this have taken to get down to size? So single cut, open this tree canopy up in a real big way. So by spending a couple of minutes on this uh, spicy nectoplum, you were able to see that it's much more open. There's probably some more detail pruning that can happen. Um, one thing you want to consider too as you're making these cuts is you want to you want to emphasize um, cuts that are going to create airflow and openness in the tree. You're not going around to just make like a hedge cut where you're giving it a, a haircut around the edges of it. You want to find those things that are creating some crowding and taking out some, uh, you know, so if you've got three branches that are all crowded, take out the middle one and now you've got space in between as opposed to just shrinking those down like this. Um, so here there's a lot more openness inside the canopy. I didn't go around the outside just to make some sort of uh, haircut. I'm trying to create some space and openness inside the canopy to keep that good sunlight and airflow going. Okay, as I was making cuts on this spicy neck to plum, um, I was making some pretty severe cuts. I took out a ton of the tree and there are two reasons for that. One, this tree is really, really vigorous and um, has a very vigorous growth habit and was growing, has grown each season in a crazy, crazy way as far as the foliage. I'm tempted to cut it back even further. Um, the other reason is, is it's part of a multi-planting. And um, with this uh, mid-pride peach and that white flesh donut peach, I think it's a Saturn donut peach back there. 
And so I'm needing to create some balance among the structure. You see how this nectoplum is just so much bigger than this poor peach. This peach had some limb breakage this last year because of uh, too much fruit set while we were on vacation. Um, and that uh, the donut peach back there, that's doing okay. So that's the reason why I'm having to cut this. And even as I'm looking at it, can you see the difference between this little guy and that giant nectoplum? I might come through and uh, create some more balance on it. But anyway, you get the idea. You're, you're wanting to prune for the for the grouping, not just for the individual tree. I came back and took even more off of this nectoplum. You know, it's um, having, to, having to kind of make decisions with the future in mind, thinking down the road instead of immediate gratification. Um, you know, unlike voters of today. <laughs> um, it really is looking down the road and seeing what kind of tree do you want and what's it gonna to take to give you that eventual tree. And that's why I'm making these cuts. Even if I'm sacrificing some fruit production this year, I'm trying to keep the structure manageable in balance with the others around it. Okay, so I think it's gonna be time for me to prune this nectarine. You know, it is so tough. I think it really is a psychological reason why you should do this before it flowers because it's just gonna kill me to cut off these gorgeous blooming um, blooming branches but you know you've got to be principled when it comes to pruning pruning is one of those things it's unlike harvesting which is so obviously yummy you take one off and you eat it pruning can feel intimidating and when you see something that's growing and beautiful like this it can feel really intimidating to do it but i want to make sure that i'm setting this tree up to not have disease and to uh, really produce continue to produce well beyond even just this year oh and the bees are on it well come on keep doing your work bees <laughs> Wow, something I realized is um, if I'm pruning while these are so are blooming right now, then when I'm taking the the pruned branches off, it's knocking off all of the petals of the of the flowers that I want to stay on here. So actually, I'm not even going to prune this right now. I'm going to wait until all the flowers are on, even after the fruit has set, and then I'm going to come through and just make those cuts. It's kind of a balance. One thing I'm also running into is. <laughs> It's so much harder already to see which foliage or you know which branches are going in which direction. Um, so really, if you can get out in front of your stuff blooming, that's the best way to do it. But I'm noticing a ton of petals on the ground, and um, the branches and the flowers that I do have on here, I want the bees to come and get. So I'm not going to prune this while it's flowering. I'm going to wait until the flowers again are gone, the fruit is set. Um, before I come out and, and prune this particular one, but I'm gonna move on to its neighbor. <laughs> Something I'm doing a lot of right now is I'm going through and I'm tipping a bunch of these branches. Remember how I go showing you on those cherries, how I'm just trying to get rid of those long whippy lengths. These nectarines are so vigorous. They grow so vigorously that I'm wanting to make sure that I'm checking that, uh, those long whips down by probably half <clears throat> because I want more bushy growth, not these long spindly things. <clears throat> that end up having fruit and all that stuff higher than I can reach. So I went through, I created a bunch of openness in this nectarine, and I'm making sure to tip some of this stuff. Still tons of fruiting wood, more nectarines that we're gonna be able to even handle off of this thing. Um, but check that check that growth. You're not, you don't want those long things, because then they get way down at the end with a bunch of fruit, and those things often break. So short, short, bushy, so that way the fruit, it's able to hold it as opposed to holding it way out here. Guys, this is exactly why to do this pruning <laughs> before everything is blooming. This killed me to cut off these apple blossoms off of this uh, Dorset golden apple. I'm still even reluctant as I'm looking here. I'm like, oh, I don't want to cut off that one. Look at all the blooms on there. This is going to be fruit. <sighs> also, be sure to disinfect your pruning shears in between trees and sometimes in between cuts if you know that a tree has some sort of pathogen on it like uh, fire blight or something like that be sure to uh, be sure to disinfect in between but yeah get your pruning done my goodness before it starts blooming look at that so beautiful and yet thrown away 
Well, I sure have a lot left to uh, to prune here. <laughs> um, there's no shortage of that stuff. Remember, pruning is something that is good for you. It's good for your tree. It spurs on um, additional growth. It uh, allows you to control and, and have the tree do for you what you want it to do. These things are resilient. I know one of the big reasons people don't prune their trees is they're afraid of what it might do to it. They're worried about killing their tree or doing some sort of irreversible thing. You know, by and large, trees are really resilient. So unless you're coming through making some gigantic dramatic cut and you're cutting it off at the bottom or something like that, you know, that's really crazy. But if you're saying, oh shoot, should I, should I cut this one or this one? And I'm just freaked out. Tom Spellman had great advice. He says, look, if you're thinking about making the cut, just make the cut. You know, if it, if it ends up being not that great, you'll figure it out. It'll likely grow some new foliage next year. Um, so don't be afraid to do it. It really is going to help you to accomplish with your trees um, and have them do for you what you want them to do. One thing to consider when you're doing uh, winter pruning specifically that I want to point out is that um, winter pruning, you're wanting to pay attention and make sure that you're leaving some fruiting wood. Um, fruiting wood, a lot of uh, fruit grows on the last year's growth on a lot of these trees. and. Um, so, I mean, this thing has more buds than, you know, this has tons and tons of fruiting wood. So generally speaking on a healthy, vigorous tree, I can come through here, thin a ton of this stuff out and still have plenty of wood left to fruit on. Um, but you do want to pay attention to that a little bit. Just be aware, um, like my uh, neck to plum over there, you know, I, I made some very drastic cuts on it. And that's because I really needed to bring its size back in balance. But generally speaking, um, we're just doing things again to thin some of these areas out, create some more airflow. Remember, we're looking for those, uh, aside from some of the shape and creating some clearance, we're also looking for those five things. We're definitely cutting out anything that is dead, dying, diseased, damaged, or deformed. And so anything that's doing that, anything that's crossing another one, anything that's dead or dying, if you've got some serious damage on it, just cut it off. Let some new good foliage grow on. So, hey, sure appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you uh, like what's going on on this channel, would love for you to subscribe if that's your thing. And if that's not, that's okay too. Um, love when you hit that like. It really makes lets me know that this stuff is resonating with you. So appreciate you tuning in. What questions do you have? You guys are so good about putting those in the comments below. And so, um, yeah, plug those in, things that have worked well for you. And yeah, sure appreciate you guys. Hey, remember, whether you've got one tree in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.